is frequency. Well, mathematically speaking, frequency is a rate. So a, a number of times something happens in a second. So if it's one time per second, then it's one hertz, right? If it's two times per second, then it's two hertz. H-E-R-T-Z, hertz. If it's a hundred times a second, it's a hundred hertz. So that's the basic of sound frequencies and how, um, how they're measured with math or basically with um, science. Light frequencies have different wavelengths. They're measured in nanometers and how that works is they're gonna measure how many times it goes up and down within a nanometer, which is like a hundred thousandth of either, so really small. So depending on what color it is, every color has a different wavelength uh, or invisible colors such as infrared, measure them, but we can't really see them. We get magnetic waves every day from Earth. You know, Earth has a magnetic field and that's why you're standing on the ground, right? If there's no gravity, you know, you'd be flying into space, right? So Earth has a magnetic field and guess what shape it is in? It's in the torus. It's in the torus. What's a torus? This is in the shape of a torus. Everything is frequency. Nikola Tesla said that if science begins to study non-physical phenomenon, we're going to achieve more in 10 years than we achieved in the decades and the centuries of science before it. And he's also said that the secret of the universe is frequency, energy, and vibration. So the foundation of everything as we know it is frequency. Can we change matter with frequency? Of course you can. It happens all the time, right? If you look at some schematics, basically they're playing sound frequencies onto water and then it makes different patterns based on the, the frequency of the sound. Okay, so you can change the shape of matter, such as water, with sound. That's very clearly done. We're mostly empty space. If you take a look at an atom, you know, there's a nucleus, there's electrons, protons, but if you actually measure how big those nucleus are and the electrons, they're tiny, tiny, tiny little, little things compared to the amount of space that they take up. So the, the atom itself is primarily just empty space and we're all made of atoms. So basically we're all primarily just empty space. So how does empty space become consciousness? Like how does empty space manipulate or change or alter empty space? Because that's what we're doing, right? You, we use our minds and your consciousness in order to create things. How do we do that? How is empty space aware of itself? That's a very profound question. And it goes down to frequency. Our consciousness is not limited within our physical bodies or our physical brains. We have more than one brain. Okay. We think that we only have this brain in our skull, but we also have a heart brain and we also have our gut brain. We got Dantan, you got like heart mind because there's these bundles of nerves in our hearts that is similar, basically identical to the nerves in our brain. And we also have enough nerve endings in our gut to be as much as our brain. The observer effect is that when we observe some electrons in some experiments, depending on whether there's an observer, it becomes a particle or a wave. So the electron changes its um, behavior depending on the presence of the observer, depending on the consciousness. You know, that postulates that the consciousness can affect reality and that connects to spirituality, which, which is what's the foundation of many people's beliefs, right? Because of, of prayer, meditation, primarily prayer and speaking to God, speaking to a higher power is that our, our, our consciousness can affect and change the, what's going to happen in real life. So if you want to pray for somebody, for them to heal, that prayer is going to be heard by God or higher power or by whatever you believe in. And then you'll be able to change the reality and help that person heal.